Hi, I'm your host Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to one more special bonus episode of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. We're here to talk about the Scrum Master Summit 2022, which will happen shortly on May 16th. And uh, if you're listening to this in the future, it is available as part of the Scrum Master Toolbox community membership. So just check it out on the website. We have with us two guests. Uh, Let's introduce them first, and then we'll go through the rest of the content for the Scrum Master Summit. First, we have with us Ari Pekka Scarp, who will host the social complexity track as well as one of the keynotes. Hey, Ape, welcome to the show. Thank you, Vasco. Hello. And we also have with us the host of the academic work that Scrum Masters must read, the research track with Chell de Ruiter. Hey, Chell, welcome to the show. Hi, Vasco. Thank you very much for having me. So Ari Pekka Scarp and Chell de Ruiter are with us here today. And they will talk more about the tracks that they are hosting. But we also have some other tracks that I want to just quickly review for our listeners. So Dana Pilayeva is hosting the coaching track. So anything to do with learning to be a coach, learning to adopt coaching in our practice as Scrum Masters. Ayodeji Ishola will host a track Agile in Africa. Uh, There's a special focus of Agile in Africa in this year's Scrum Master Summit, and he will be addressing specific cultural aspects that Agile has in the continent. Mariana Trigo will host a very, very productive track. They have six sessions on career advice, and especially with a focus on those of us who probably don't have a technical background and and how can we come into the Scrum Master track. So that's going to be Mariana's career track. And Eve Hanul, who's the co-author of the Tips from the Trenches audiobook, will host a track on hybrid work, which is, of course, a very topical aspect of uh, how we organize work and how we organize agile teams. So he will be talking about hybrid and remote teams. And finally, but definitely also quite interesting, the track by Martin von Weissenberry. He will share patterns of scaled agile, scaled agile, pardon me. Now, the, the cool thing about this track is that it will share real stories from real Scrum Masters out there that have been struggling to scale. So it will be very practical aspects of scaling. So it's not going to be a, a framework description or a framework training track. It will be more focused on what managers, what team leads, what quality engineers need to focus on when it comes to scaling. So that was an overview of the Scrum Master Summit. Now we'll dive into Ari Pekka's and Chell's tracks. We'll start with Ari Pekka. So Ari Pekka, you are going to talk to us about social complexity. And we actually have another episode uh, with Jurgen Appelo and Ari Pekka on the topic. I'll link to it on the show notes. But uh, what is one highlight that you want to share with our listeners about the track that you're hosting, Ari Pekka? Well, I think that this social complexity track is looking at the people side of R&D. So how these human relations are in the core of productive work. So this is really all about this uh, track. And you've interviewed, I think, four people in total, right? Including the keynote? Yes. That have quite different perspectives on the topic of social complexity. And uh, I just saw the interview you recorded with Neil Taylor, and he's talking about a topic that uh, very often doesn't get talked about in our community, which is the the concept of anti-fragility and how we can benefit from complexity, not only try to manage within complexity or try to create coping strategies with complexity, but actually how to thrive, how to become even better when things are unpredictable. What other talk would you recommend our listeners to listen to and why? Actually, there's uh, a whole topic that was uh, talked about with both Chris Moles and uh, Juho Partanen. And this was this um, topic of dealing with anxiety in working with teams and uh, employees. So so both of them brought this up in a little bit different uh, 
environments. And I think that this keynote with Chris Moles that, that was talking about this, the uncertainty and the anxiety that is related to it. Uh, we all feel this kind of anxiety when we are in the situations where we don't really know what is going to happen. There's unpredictability in, in our world at that time. And it is quite important to actually acknowledge this anxiety and also have ways to deal with it so that we don't have to escape it by doing some kind of mental trick with us that, that, that we just decide that, uh, well, we have this plan and we will go with this plan and everything goes like uh, this. it's planned so we don't have to feel this anxiety anymore. When in reality, reality is the reality. Plans or no plans, there will be this unpredictability quality in it. And uh, how we deal with it is very important. And and I think that um, as Scrum Masters or Agile Coaches, people often are expecting us to take away their anxiety by providing some tool or, or plan or solution to, to something that is very complex and uh, has this quality of unpredictability. That's a, a a great point. Before I I have something to comment, but I don't know. Chell, did you want to comment something on this topic of anxiety? No, I mean it's just very recognizable, right? I mean many of us, especially specifically now, have been suffering from this and have been dealing with this and have been affected by this, uh, either ourselves or people in our team. So very real, very important topic. I would add to what uh, Aripek and Chell said. Also, the the idea that. It's not about removing anxiety. It's about learning to live with anxiety. Because uh, I think the risk, Ari Pekka illustrated very clearly, the risk is that uh, instead of accepting that there needs to be some anxiety in in a world that is complex, right? And, And of course, it starts from accepting that the world is complex. If we don't want to deal with anxiety, or we, if we don't, if we can't cope with anxiety, then we we create these tools and we use these tools like the plan-driven execution approach, right? Like uh, uh, where any deviation from the plan is is punished greatly, and we learn very little because, of course, if if the plan didn't happen, it's because somebody made a mistake. Not accepting that there's complexity leads to blaming. And of course, finger pointing and and so on. It also leads to something that I don't think that you and Chris mentioned that, Ari Pekka, but it also leads to one of the very basic premises of modern management, which is this, it's kind of an offshoot of planning, but it's, it's higher level, which is the need to separate tasks into different roles. And then assuming that everybody will, if everybody does the task correctly, the end result will be a positive result, right? Like this is what we talk about when we we talk about as Scrum Masters about silos, right? And handovers, right? And and silos and handovers are also an aspect that comes from dealing with anxiety, and of course that anxiety coming from the complexity and and the sometimes the inability we have to see the whole. And because we can't see the whole, we create these roles like architects, for example, that are supposed to be focusing 100% on seeing the whole and breaking things down and then assigning them to the different teams. Yeah. And then there can be this kind of a culture of blame and failure if you don't do those tasks that are supposed to uh, take away this uncertainty. But I think that your partner was also talking about this anxiety as a way how leadership is dealing with this. So he talked about the important function of leaders and and not not only formal leaders, but uh, also informal leaders in dealing with the anxiety in a way that uh, they provide the container, like in in Beyond's uh, psychoanalytic sense, the container for the anxiety so that the team and employees can function and uh, not be overwhelmed by these uh, feelings of uncertainty. And, and I think this, this same topic is important in coaching, in scrum mastering, uh, agile coaching also. But I guess talking about the leaders, right? I mean, letting things go, trusting your team causes actually anxiety from their part as well. So, I mean, that's, that's a little bit of a catch-22, I guess, almost. I think that the related to that, the point that at least Chris was uh, making is that we can't avoid 
having to deal with anxiety. Anxiety is a permanent in a complex world. And we need to figure out and develop strategies so that we can live with that anxiety instead of trying to remove the anxiety. Yes, exactly. And this container isn't taking the anxiety away or removing it uh, from us. It's just something that uh, gives you some support with dealing with this anxiety. Yeah, and what, a very concrete example is as Scrum Masters, we can listen to the team members' complaints or, or questions and instead of acting as a way to amplify those complaints, which sometimes it's quite natural to do, right? We just push them upwards. We can also work with the team members to understand where those questions are coming from, what might be triggering that. And, and I think that was one of the things, I don't know if, if it was Chris who, who said this, that we have to recognize it and we have to accept it. And there's no way to accept it unless we first talk about it, right? Like we have to name it, we have to say, look, the anxiety is here. We know that there's this uncertainty about certain things that are coming up, like a decision that is missing or whatever. But now we need to make a decision understanding that there's uncertainty that we can't resolve, right? Like, And, and this is one very concrete action that we can take as Scrum Masters in order to provide that container, kind of like a coaching reflection, but also kind of softening for the team to be able to continue even though they don't know the answers to all of the questions yeah anxiety is also information it's not a uh, failure or symptom that we need to get rid of so this is very important point and uh, related to this aspect of working with the teams through the anxiety with the teams of course i i have to recommend dana's coaching track where one of the aspects of of becoming a coach is of course to be able to provide that reflection and and that container for teams in dealing with anxiety and we also have of course the uh, academic and research track that Chell is is hosting for us so Chell, what is one highlight you want to share with our listeners a good reason for them to go and uh, watch the talks that you have been recording one only well I think the essence or the idea is that we as Scrum Masters, we, we like to experiment, we like to evaluate, we like to try things out and figure out what's the best way. But I think the essence of it is, is that if you're taking also a little bit of an academic approach and take a little bit more of an empirical supported way of thinking, then actually we can bring a lot, a lot of science already into the, the things that we do to support our decisions and actually avoid having to reinvent the wheel. So I think there's a lot of, there's method, there is examples, there's interesting theory. So, well, see, there you go. You gave me one reason. I gave you a little bit more than that. But the, 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 the way you're thinking, the curiosity, the, the critical reflections on, on what we do, I think that's, that's one of the things we can definitely learn and can definitely take from, from academics. But rest assured, I mean, we have a lot of very nice, applicable things as well, rather than just theoretical frameworks. Yeah, I think that's a good point, because uh, academic to the untrained ear may sound like, oh, it's just uh, theories. But actually, you already mentioned it, Shell, at least in our field of software development and techniques and approaches for software development, academia has done a lot of empirical research, i.e., you know, working through specific aspects with teams like, of course, leadership is one that's obvious uh, that has been widely studied and, and many things published around that, but also about much more day-to-day -day things like portfolio management or aspects around planning, and of course, also research related to, to technologies that we use as well. And those should have people, psychology and related topics. I mean, that's a big part of what we do, right? That's what I was going to say, because we actually have a psychologist here in the in the speakers. So uh, Ari Pekka is an organizational psychologist. Tell us a little bit more about some of the things that you are looking for. When you look at academia, what are the areas, the, the fields, the sources that you look for uh, when it comes to work that helps Scrum Masters and Agile coaches? Well, I've been working quite extensively in this uh, occupational healthcare. So I think that I quite often look at the research on work well-being, you know, this uh, different kind of research on, on, on what, what things support people in their work, also mentally, physically. 
this also provides some some important i think ideas on how to for example organize the different units and teams that we have and and what are the ways of doing the work so that they don't uh, overload our mental capacities for example yeah that's a great aspect to mention we, we you talked about mental capacity i mean the term that came to my mind was cognitive load which is something that one of the guests in your track uh, Judy Reese also talks about and understanding that research for us as scrum masters is not only about agile right like Ari Pekka said we can also look at areas like well-being at work and and what has been learned from that perspective also cognitive load i was just recently interviewing a guest on the podcast where we talked about a, a, a method which is not from academia it's from a practitioner it's called getting things done but one of the key aspects of that method is that it is a method to help us reduce the cognitive load of the demands that are there anyway right it's not about somehow reducing the demands it's about creating a system that allows us to manage the cognitive load that we have to deal with every day one of the things that we were touching on in one of the tracks is actually related to habits the way uh, habits of course have definitely also a big role to play in well the decisions that we make but also how we load our capacity how much we think about certain things and how how difficult we make things for ourselves but just by sticking to a certain habit so that's also a very interesting part on the cognitive load as well yeah and i was also thinking about this research on on social cooperation empathy and uh, things like this because those are also affecting greatly uh, the teamwork and also different kind of leadership uh, functions also the capacity to understand other people's mind emotions uh, cognition and these things are really in in the key of uh, having a good functional team relationships yeah and and that just opens a whole another can of worms right like uh, research into <laughs> uh, social aspects related to work i was recently listening to a, a podcast that was trying to tackle to define and to illustrate and and to tell stories around the concept of burnout but from the perspective of research so not not burnout as a cultural phenomena which it is obviously right like something that happens to people but also as a topic of study as a topic of research and the things that we might be able to put in place to avoid a high burnout and uh, i'm reminded for example that at least in the country where i live in finland we have a much higher rate of burnout in the it business than we have in many other businesses and and that's something that might be very helpful for us as scrum masters as a point of research i'll put the link on the show notes to that podcast because i think that, that it also contains a lot of potential sources for us to explore and and techniques and tools to apply to our work Great stuff. We're almost getting to the end though. So uh I will ask from each of you first one phrase or insight or lesson from the interviews you've done so far that you want our scrum masters to be aware of and then also where can people find you and uh, a lot more about the work that you're doing and uh we can start with Chell. So I think the main pitch for me that I would give to people for to join the track is that allow yourself to be challenged by the sciences that support the work that we do and the behaviors that you see in the team because there may be a lot of things that we do that are just we just happen to do them it's stuff that we like but there's actually really strong some some research being done to maybe overthrow some of your long held beliefs and that could really really open your eyes to to do something different And where can people find you and the work that you're doing, Joe? Well, in, in the on the tracks that will be posted for for the for the for the Scrum Master Summit, uh, for the remainder, you have to look me up on LinkedIn, and uh, I will keep sharing interesting stuff and uh, stuff there. Absolutely, we'll put the link to those also on the show notes. How about you, Arepeka? Well, I didn't mention Judy Reese and her speech about this uh, using metaphors for getting more information on people and teams and i think that that was very interesting discussion also what metaphors can can reveal of us and for us uh, for our team members our own values goals and and stuff like that so th- that was also very very interesting talk 
if you want to know more about my work, uh, if you speak Finnish, mielinlaboratorio.fi is one, one thing. And then in, in English, uh, Fractal Sauna blog that uh, has been there quite many years already. So those would be two places to find something from, from my perspectives. Absolutely. I will put the link on the show notes to uh, all of those resources so that people can easily find Ari, Pekka and Chell. And of course, follow their tracks at scrummastersummit.org. The links will be on the show notes and uh, connect with them on LinkedIn. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. So thank you very much for joining me today and uh, for your generosity with your time and your knowledge. Thank you very much, Arthur. Yes, thanks. Thanks very much. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring. 